Hi guys, welcome to our Chip Teratsu vs Dark Chip Teratsu Statue launch stream. This is Chuckles. And I'm Liz. After the popularity of our previous Okami resin and PVC statues, we are now ready to turn to another corner of the Okami universe. The spiritual successor to the original Okami game, Okami Den! The rooftop son of Amaterasu, Chibi Terasu, has been heavily requested by fans ever since we released our first Okami statue years ago. Before we reveal the Chibi Terasu statue, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so you will not miss out any of our upcoming launches. Let's not make them wait any longer and review Chip Teratsu to the world in 3, 2, 1, BOOM! Oh, there's two of them! Not quite, Liz. While there are two wolf pups present in this statue, the dark coloured one is actually the evil copy of Chip Teratsu, Dark Chip Teratsu. Because he is a copy of Chip Teratsu, he also has the same red markings on him. Dark Chibi Terasu may be evil, but he is still absolutely adorable. And he seems to have a rider. What's going on in this scene? Our statue recreates the epic final battle in Okamiden, in which Chip Terasu must defeat Dark Chip Terasu, who is being ridden by one of Chip Terasu's partners in the game, Kuni. Mm, but why is Chibi Terasu's friend teaming up against him? Kuni has been possessed by the demon Akuro, who is the main antagonist of Okamiden. Chip Teratsu must win the final boss battle to save his friend. Wow, what a dramatic scene we have captured in this statue. Is the base inspired by that battle then? That's correct, Liz. We have faithfully recreated the Dark Realm stage where the final battle takes place as the inspiration for this base. Kuni is wielding his wooden sword, which he uses against Chip Teratsu in that fight. I love how action-packed the statue is. Even with how cute the two wolf pups are, you can tell they are engaged in a very dynamic battle. It was important for the piece to feel exciting, so Chip Teratsu is captured in midair, with a trail of flowers blooming behind him, just like in the game. I like how the flowers closer to Chippy Terasu have not had time to bloom yet because he's moving so quickly. Next, we are going to show you a short clip showcasing the features of the standard edition. The standard edition of the Chippy Terasu diorama looks amazing. Agreed, but the exclusive edition will make it even better. Fans who have purchased our previous Okami statues may think they know exactly what the exclusive will be, but this time there's a twist. A twist? I wonder what would that be? Without further ado, let's find that out in 3, 2, 1... Boom! Wow, there are more lights than we have ever had on an Okami statue. That's right. Once again, we have utilized our speciality of integrating LED lights into our statues. On all our previous Okami statues, the divine instruments have lit up. So, of course, Chip Teratsu does as well. 
but wow, Chibiturazu's reflector lights up as most fans probably hoped for. There are three additional areas on this piece with lights. Mm, both Kuni and Dachi Bitarasu's eyes light up. Kuni and Dachi Bitarasu are still adorable, but they also look a lot more evil with these glowing eyes. Chibiturasu must be terrified to fight his friend and his dark copy with scary eyes like these. Yes, the LED light up eyes on Kuni really drive home that he is possessed by the demon Akiro. Chibiturasu is desperate to defeat the demon and save his partner. The way that the light up markings on Dark Chibiturasu also glow is very cool. They really help to make the two wolf pops look different. Definitely. Now let's review the features of the exclusive edition in this video. What an awesome video! I bet the Okami fans are really hyped for pre-orders to open now. Before that though, here's a word from First for Figures co-founder Alex Davis with some behind the scenes information on the development of the Chibiturasu statue. Okami Den has just celebrated its 10th anniversary, so I thought that this would be the perfect time to showcase our beautiful Chibiturazu versus Dark Chibiturazu battle diorama. I love how this piece came out. It's an epic fight between good versus evil mixed with a healthy dose of cuteness. I mean, come on, look at their faces and their cute paws. It makes me want to boot the snoot. Sorry, I just couldn't resist. You know, it's always a pleasure to dive into the world of Akami, and this time it's no different. Akami Dan has all the trademark characteristics of the art style of Akami, so we already had a great starting place to develop this piece, as we knew which direction to go. That's because we've already developed quite a few Akami pieces so far. However, that also means that we're slightly constrained by the previous pieces in the line as well, particularly when it came to the base size and shape. As you can see here, Chibiturazu versus Dark Chibiturazu's base has the same style of the big rectangular black base that our original Amaterasu and Shirinui statues had. So there was a need to be consistent with that. That wasn't the only issue. We had to consider the scale in relation to the other two. Seeing as Chibiturazu is rather, well, you know, chibi, if we did a solo Chibiturazu on this base, it would be really easy for him to look way too small in proportion and get swallowed up by this base. That's why we came up with a final boss battle idea that pits Chibiturazu against Dark Chibiturazu and possessed Kuni. It would tick all the boxes. The base could be the same size as the previous statues in the range and would allow for us to create something awesome whilst maintaining the scale ratio. So we had our basic idea penciled out, but it takes a lot to go from idea to concept to sculpt. Here to talk about that very process is our resident senior artist, Two Boy. Hi, I'm Two and I'm a senior artist at First Four Figures. One of the biggest challenges with creating characters like Chibiturazu and his dark counterpart is translating the serial style and world of Akami into something that's tactile. How could we convey cute low poly puppies into highly detailed figurines? How do we give them real world fangs and still not make them look too hostile? How do we sculpt something that's as stylized and intangible as Okami smoke? These were the questions that we challenged throughout the process. Our answer to that was to be as faithful as we can to the shapes and proportions of the original characters. 
keeping their bodies rounded and soft and their proportions short and puppy like. We went through several iterations to make sure we were getting the shapes right, like Cooney's bulbous cheeks and his large forearms and his tiny little legs. Another challenge we came across was showing two characters face to face in side view without them looking too flat and making sure we have a clear view of all their faces so that they were identifiable from the main shot. We had to play with the placement such as putting Chibitavasu in the back so that we get a three quarter shot of him lunging at Doc Chibitavasu and we also had to make sure that Kuni who was sitting on the back of Doc Chibitavasu was clearly visible and uh, identifiable as well. The most important aspect of the piece was arguably the composition. Creating a balance between two characters and having dynamic action lines and designing things like the tails of each character so that the action line flows nicely through their bodies. In action poses, diagonal lines are on point, so we use them in the interaction here between two virals, along with things like the line of the sword and the angle of the smoke. Every flower position, every angle, every silhouette and shape was meticulously composed by our senior concept artist, Alex Pasenko, and then transposed beautifully by our 3D talent, Roberto Biela, into this highly dynamic result that you see here. We hope you enjoyed this and looking forward to seeing this in your collection. Thanks too. Great insights and I enjoyed watching you working with the guys to get the rhythm and flow of the design just right. Once we got to the physical stage, the painting was pretty straightforward as we knew the style that we would be going for. The exclusive version with its LED light ups was something I could imagine the moment that I knew that we would be making a Chibiturazu and I'm sure you agree it came out amazing. The whole team knocked it out of the park. I hope you found this development diary interesting. A lot of time, effort, care and most importantly passion went into Chibiturazu's creation. The marketing team continues to make these wonderful videos and pictures for you to enjoy. So there you have it. Chibitiratsu vs Dark Chibitiratsu and Possess Kuni all wrapped up. We also have a lot more Okami figures in development so you can look forward to their development diaries in the future. And without further ado, back to you Chocks and Liz. That was some amazing insight into Chibitiratsu's development diary. It was really insightful to see what Tu and the rest of the team had to deal with. Now let's watch this final video where Liz takes a closer look at the finer details of our Chibitaratsu statue. Hi guys, welcome to Fast Ball Figures. Okami fans, we finally have for you the long-awaited collectible from the spiritual successor of Okami. Our Chibitaratsu vs. Star Chibitaratsu and Possessed Kuni Resin statue from Okami then. Let's give it a spin and take a closer look at this intense battle scene. This is the standard edition. These two pops are just adorable. The concept for this resin statue is inspired by the final boss battle in Okamiden, where Chibiturasu faces a dark version of himself, who is mounted on by an Akuru possessed Kuni. Akuru is the main antagonist of the game, while Kuni is the first of Chibiturasu's five playable partners in Okami Den. Paying close attention to the details, everything is there. From the markings all over Chibiturasu, and that Chibiturasu, to the gradient paint application of Kuni's hair, and the scar on his face which by the way is sculpted on and even the base is that of the dark ram stage where they have their final showdown 
the smoke trails beneath Chibiterasu and Dark Chibiterasu showed off just how heated their battle is. And even Kuni's clothes are sculpted in a way to reflect this energy. Lastly, we can't forget about the final touches that are classic to the Okami series. And those are the trails of flowers left behind when Chibiterasu runs around. And of course, the Divine Retribution, which is the starting weapon in both Okami and Okamiden. It even has the mirror underneath, since this is a reflector type Divine Instrument. This is the exclusive edition of this statue, which is available for pre-order only on our website. This edition comes with LED light-up parts that the standard edition does not have. In particular, the Divine Retribution of Chibiterasu. The markings of Dark Chibiterasu. And the eyes of Kuni and Dark Chibiterasu all light up. And like our previous Okami collectibles, the Divine Instrument comes with two LED modes, Static and animated. The LEDs really breathe more life into this piece as if it came straight out of the game. I especially like how the lights blend really well with the red markings of Dark Chibiterasu. Cute, yet a bit scary at the same time. And that wraps up our closer look. I hope you found this informative. I always look forward to watching your Close Look videos, Liz. Even though I get to be up close with our statues myself in person, somehow you still always find some details to talk about. That's my job, Chops. Now let's see how this diorama looks next to some of our other Okami collectibles. Boom! Wow, the larger sides of the Edo Wolves really drive home that Chibiterasu and Dark Chibiterasu are still young. Seeing the similar red markings on Chibiterasu's mother makes Chibiterasu's little details even cuter. It's definitely cool being able to see the difference in sizes and proportions between the full-grown wolves and the two wolf pups in our new diorama. Also notice how the rectangular base of this diorama follows the theme of the bases from the Shurinui and the original Amaterasu statues. Totally agree, Chops. They go so well together. Now, let's go through the pricing for the different versions available. For the standard edition, the price is as follows and will be available for pre-order on our website and at your local retailer. Thank you. For the exclusive edition, the price is as follows. The exclusive edition comes with everything that the standard edition includes, plus the LED functions. The exclusive edition is only available for pre-order on our website, firstforfigures.com. Thank you for joining us for our Okami Den Chibi Terasu vs Dark Chibi Terasu and Possessed Kuni statue launch stream. Follow our social media channels for more information. We also have an amazing community on Facebook called the First Figures Official Collectors Club, where we chat with our members, run polls, post behind the scenes content, giveaways, and so much more. Check us out. Okay, pre orders are now open. Links are in the description. FRF is love. FRF is life. And we shall see you in the next one. Bye. Laters.
Thank you.